What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Python tutorial series for advanced programmers. In today's video, we're going to talk about generators. So let us get right into it. All right, so let us talk about generators. And I'm not going to give you a formal definition here of what a generator is. I'm going to show you how we can work with generators and what we can use them for. So let's say we just want to have a program in which we have a sequence from one to let's say 9 million like that. And what we want to do with that sequence is we just want to, I don't know, take the number, each of those numbers uh, to the power of three. So cubing it, and then we want to print the result. Now, one primitive way, of course, no one's going to do it like that. But one primitive way to do it is to just say one, two, three, four, five, and so on until you get to uh, 9 million and so on. And then you could just uh, iterate through the list and print x to the power of three every time. Um, what we would usually do in this particular case is we would say something like four x in range one to nine million. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. And then we would just say print x to the power of three. Now the range function, however, uh, is sometimes limited because we're essentially having a start and end and then we have a step size, but we cannot create all kinds of different sequences. So what do we do when we don't have the range function or we cannot use the range function for what we're trying to do? We have to build our own generators. Now generators have something that is called lazy execution. Um, if you've ever programmed in Haskell, for example, you will know what that is. Haskell has uh, lists and you can say, for example, in Haskell, you have a list that is uh, two point point and then 90. And what you get then is you you get the numbers from two to 90, but we don't get them as a collection, but we get them whenever we need it. So this is a structure that produces whatever we need when we need it. And this is something that we also have in generators in Python. So uh, what could a generator look like? We could say def my generator uh, and we have to pass a number here. I mean, we don't have to pass a number, but we're going to pass a number for now. And in that generator, we can, uh, return something, but we're not going to return it in the way that we usually return it, we're going to use a new keyword here. And this keyword is going to be called yield. Now yield is interesting, because every time we get to that yield, we get the next element. So you can, you can think about it like that. Let's say we have four. Um, actually, maybe we should not call this x, but call this n. And then we could say for x in range n. And then what we do is we don't get just um, we, d we don't return the value because we can only return once we yield the value. So every time we get to that yield statement, we get the next iteration. So we can say yield uh, x in this case, or x to the power of three. And what we can now do with that is we can say values that we're interested in is my generator up until 9 million, for example. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And now what we have is we don't have a list of all the values cubed, but we have a generator that is going to give us the next value cubed whenever we need it. So, so on demand, so to say. Um, and we can see that this is the case by just saying print next values. So next is the keyword that we need to uh, that, that we or next is the function that we call to get the next element from the values. And let's just enter that a couple of times. And then I'm going to open a terminal split down here. Uh, bash pi directory nine there you go python three actually main.py and you can see that we get all the cube numbers here so we start with zero one then two two to the power of three is eight four to the power of uh, three to the power of three is 27 and so on so um you can essentially see that the next keyword always gives us the next yield statement. So yield is essentially just a way of returning a value, uh, but not in the way that you then, uh, then get out of the function, but you just get the next value, so to say, and you can not only do it with the next function here, uh, you can also do it with iteration. So we can say, for example, for uh, four x in values, we can say print x. Now this is going to be a pretty, maybe we should decrease the number here. Let's go with 100 for now. Uh, and then we can go ahead and run the same thing. And you can see that we get all the different numbers here. Um, 
But at the same time, no matter how much uh, or what number we pass here, the size of my generator is not going to change. So we can, I think the library now, I hope I don't do any mistakes here, but I think the library is called, or the function is called sys.getSize. So let's say import sys. Dot, or actually just import sys. And then we should be able to do sys.getSize off. Yes, there you go. Get size off values in this case. And let's just get rid of all that. And then, yeah, 112 bytes, so to say. I think it's bytes. However, you can see that whatever I do here doesn't really matter because if I add a bunch of zeros here, this is not going to change down here. So this is not going to... Uh, this is not going to change the size of this object because the object is still 112 bytes uh, large because we don't add any data. We just say, okay, you go longer, but we don't add anything there. So one more thing that we can do with generators that we cannot do with ordinary collections is we can create infinite sequences. So we can say, for example, def, oh, I have caps lock, def infinite sequence, and of course, we don't pass a parameter here because we don't have a limit. And then we can say, I don't know, the first one is going to be one. And then I'm going to print all the powers of five, for example. So I'm going to say while true. And I'm going to say yield the results, the current results. And then take the results times equals five. So we will get one and five and 25, 125. So essentially five to the power of zero, five to the power of one, five to the power of two and so on. This is a sequence, but it doesn't have a limit. Now, of course, if I go in a loop and say four X in, uh, in this infinite sequence, we're going to go on forever, but I can go ahead and say, I don't know, values equals infinite sequence. And then I can just say print next of that sequence. I can do this a bunch of times here and you're going to see, uh, that what are we going to see like that there you go 1 5 25 125 625 and so on and as i said we can go on forever we can also go in a loop here and say okay up until the 100th uh power of five but the point is we have this infinite sequence it doesn't store any values it just yields the next value it doesn't have any uh big collection of all the powers of five so we don't waste memory but we still have a sequence that we can go on forever uh, and, and get the next power of five, unless we're limit, limited by memory, obviously. Now, let me show you what happens if we just go ahead and say 4x in values print x. I hope my system doesn't crash here. But essentially what happens here is we get, I mean, maybe it doesn't flush the output. So, oh man, it's, it's crashed. It crashed. I said it's going to crash. However, you can see that it's crashing maybe if you're not running this on... Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, it loaded. So I think if you're not running this on a Windows Linux subsystem as I'm doing, maybe you're going to see them in real time here. Uh, but as you can see, it goes on forever and the while true loop gets executed because actually this while true loop is only stopped because we have this yield, uh, this yield keyword because it says, okay, stop until we get the next value or the next value is requested. Um, but when we are constantly requesting the next value, obviously we're going to go endlessly uh, into infinity. So one way to counteract this is of course to just say for x in range, I don't know, I wanna have 500 values and then I can say next or print next from the values or I can also do another way which is probably not the most, uh, not the best way. We could also say something like uh, if, or we can have a counter here, I don't know, counter, but then it's no longer infinite, so forget about this. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. So the best way is probably to just go ahead and say 4x in range and how many values are we interested in. And then we're just going to go next, 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 and so on. So this is how generators in Python work. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.